All right. It looks like we are set up. You might look and see if we're live. Mr. Stasek. I am uh, looking. We're streaming live. All right. So we got a new tool here we're playing with in Zoom. And uh, today we're going to we're going to break down. This is uh, this content is, is very specific for who it's for. Um, and I'll, I'll, we'll get into that a little bit later exactly for who it's for. But, you know, really, um, mega agent teams and independent brokerages man the if there's one video that we could create which is the goal today is is to share this information and have an asset that you know that anybody can watch you may be watching it now on youtube or whatever uh, but you know having an asset that that explains all the ways to structure a brokerage if you're an independent moving over or if you're a mega agent team um that's moving over and, and basically what i would say is you know 10 agents or more um you know 10 or more agents doing 40 million in volume 175 transactions that that's going to mean that that that's important because later you're going to understand why uh, in terms of the structure and compensation plan and the model and stuff like that. So um, just had a lot of conversations as we've been doing this over the um, you know the last 15 months. We've brought a ton of uh, a ton of phenomenal uh, you know people over to the company um, that are huge you know producers, uh, mega agent teams, and independents. So this has been kind of really our niche, and um, just wanted to share some of the. The do's and don'ts, the things that work, and really some of the misconceptions and some of the mistakes people make as they're thinking about coming on board from that perspective. But before we get into that, um, Mr. Stasek, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing just fine. How are you, man? Um, I think, um, I'm not sure if you know this, but it looks like you're broadcasting live on your page, on your personal page. Is that your intention? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. I thought you were going on your business page. So I was looking the whole time for your business page, but this is just fine too. Right on. Um, things are good, man. Things are good and uh, things are busy. And uh, man, got lots of uh, lots of big stuff coming up with um, some 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 independents and some some teams that we're bringing over. And right, I love this. The spring market's about to hit. Right on. Thank you, Ralph. I see. I'm seeing the comments now. Ralph was telling us we were live earlier. Uh, Chris Fouché, what's up, brother? Brian Coates, what's up, dog? Matthew McComb, what's up, Dan Bunch? I know we got a big event coming, coming, uh, just got off the phone. Mike said, you guys got a big event in Milwaukee coming to, uh, I guess tomorrow. Um, so good job on that. Excited to be bringing that value. Cool, man. So, uh, and Dan says, hello. Hello. What's up, Carlos? Yeah. Good to see you, my friend. <clears throat> yeah, man. So, um, so yeah, so let's, let's kind of dive into this. So, you know, what, what have you, um, you know, it, it's interesting because like when I go and look at, you know, the list of, of, mega agent teams and independent brokerages that, you know, that are mega agent teams, generally speaking, sometimes mega agent teams, sometimes they're a traditional independent, you know, where the, you know, the agents in production, sometimes not in production. And there's just a ton of questions I get around this topic about how do you, you know, how do you move, um, you know, you know, your team over, but it might make sense for us to talk a little bit about some of the benefits ahead of time. I mean, this isn't meant to be a, an EXP presentation. So, you know, ideally you would have watched, you know, an EXP explained and seen the business model and you, and you understand the opportunity that is in front of you, but maybe we could talk a little bit about some of the benefits um, and some of the problems that the model has solved for us, you know, coming over. I came over as an independent company, you know, Al, obviously you came over as an independent. And when I was doing the math, I was, you know, that we were looking at earlier with all those brokers uh, that are an agents that have come on board, it was 60% of that, group was independent and um you know, probably 30 percent of it you know them came from keller williams and then you know mixed bag for the rest but it's kind of interesting to see you know you know who they are where they're coming from and what problems it solves. so maybe we can unpack that a little bit for folks and and just make sure everybody's on the same page before we kind of get into some of the really the details that i find is hard to find if you're a, if you're a, a independent or a mega agent team and you're really trying to evaluate this opportunity there really isn't any content out there that specifically speaks to you so that's really kind of why we're doing this video so uh, we have this asset for moving forward. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say that uh, the, the, when you did that survey, I was actually shocked uh, at that percentage. I thought for sure um, just from, you know, and maybe it's just because of the, the amount of uh, Facebook lives and communications that's going on um, all around the country from a lot of the Keller Williams agents that are coming over. I didn't realize that what trumped the amount of Keller Williams agents that came over are the independents. So when, when, you know, we go back and talk about that word disruption that seems to be overused, uh, it, it feels like we're, um, we're disrupting the independent model more than anything 
it was just, you know, 60% of that group. Now that's obviously not a, a, an official poll, uh, you know, where we're pulling the entire company, but um, it's a pretty good large subset of the company. Um, I'd say it's a fair sampling too, um, but I just did not expect that to be. In fact, I, I figured it was going to be flip flop, right? But um, that was a, a shocker for me. But one of the reasons that you wanted to do this, um, we both had two topics that we were real passionate about. One uh, was was because we, you specifically, and, and we, we both really have so many conversations with independent brokers and team leaders of mega teams who. They know the model. They've seen, you know, they've 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 been sent videos and whatever. Um, but there's still this this void in their mind of how exactly or what would it look like if they brought their their company right. over or if they brought their team over. And I think it's a lot easier to to um, when you're either with Remax or Keller Williams or or any of the brands where you're paying, you know, into a franchise of some kind right. versus when you're independent. And that's where I think a lot of people get stuck. So we're gonna. Um, that's, that's the thing that you've been real passionate about wanting to make a, a, a live about. So right. that we can get that out there for me, I I've been really wanting to get, um, the communication out of this, this whole thing of like, Oh, you know, everyone that's going over there, they're not selling any houses. Well, we're going to put up some slides here. That's going to just, uh, debunk that, uh, myth of, Oh yeah. The people coming over, they're doing nothing but recruiting. In fact, it's just the opposite of that. Um, yes, there's a small bit of us that, um, you know, have earned some influence in our industry that we love and that we're passionate about mainly because we've taught and trained and coached so many agents up in their business. But um, we're going to show you some names of some really, really great agents, just the, the, the highest quality professionals you're going to see. And we've compiled that list. So I'm excited about showing that part. So we've kind of combined both of our, we were going to do two separate lives. And we're combining it all into one with respect of all of our viewers time. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so let's just jump jump right on to, onto this real quick. There's a few slides here. I'm not gonna, we're not going to bog you down with a whole lot of slides. We know you love to look at our faces instead, right? So, all right. So, all right, we're going to jump onto this one. Hopefully this works out. Y'all let me know. Make a comment if you can see the slides. I'm going to hit the present mode just so it'll be full screen. You guys should still be able to see me and Albie. Yeah. So, um, you know, and at any point, if you want to um, schedule a call with uh, me or Al uh, to have, you know, it, it almost always requires a deeper conversation. So, you know, if that's the case and you do, um, you can go to askjkinder.com. That goes right to my calendar. You can schedule a 20 minute call with me and we'll, we'll hammer it out and we're happy to help you. And alstasic.com, same thing um, can help you there as well. So just write that down. So if you, if you think you want to have a conversation, we're happy to do that. This is, this is what we do all day. So, and it's, and it's actually, more fun than you would think, man. I, I spend hours sometimes on the phone trying to really identify that, you know, the right structure of doing, you know, making this move. So um, kind of who this is for. So I, you know, we kind of already said this, but, you know, this you know, specifically, if you're watching this, I mean, it, you know, we're going to be talking about the mega agent icon program at EXP, um, which um, specifically you have to match the criteria and it's by invitation only. So mega agent, ten, uh, you know, teams with 10 or more agents, independent brokers with 10 or more agents, you know, as a team leader, you know, you're probably at this stage, you should be either in, you could be in production or out of production. I think, you know, depending on if you're independent or not and, and kind of what your structure of your agents look like. And if you're a traditional independent or you're a team that, you know, hybrid and in, independent, there's so many variables there. But I think this is definitely going to be for you. You know, if you're either if you're out of production, that's fine or in production. Um, that's fine as well. And you could have way more than 10 agents. I mean, 100 agents, 200 agents. Once you get to a thousand agents, um, things start to get um, definitely time for a phone call. But, um, you know, there's, um, you know, anything under probably I'd say, you know, two, two, 300 agents is pretty easy. This is really kind of geared for you guys. So um, production needs to be at 40 million and 175 units annually, just because that's the requirement for this mega agent icon program, which is really ideally how you're going to fit um, if you're going to make this transition. So um so this, uh, this next list is a list of mega agent teams and independents I added up um, that have done um, in the last 12 months, or maybe it was last year, I think we asked them that question, 7,185 transactions, a little over 2.2 billion, billion in volume, which is a lot of, a lot of volume. So uh, again, when we're talking about a lot of independents and, and teams moving over, there's a whole lot of them. 
Um, you know, Al, I'll let you, since you made these slides, uh, beautiful slides, I'll let you uh, uh, read, read through it and uh, I'll just hit the button for you. How about that? Well, that'll be great. I appreciate that, Jay. And I actually want to point out that the, the, the slide that you had previous that had the 7,000 transactions, that's just the total. That's just the total of the teams and brokerages that came over that we're going to show you right now. That's nowhere near, uh, you know, what all of the teams that are XP. I just want to be, be clear. Right, right. Yeah, this is, the, the, this is the, um, the 24 teams. And I think maybe all but one or two of these are agents that we, you know, and brokers that, that we brought into the company. So, right. so like that's not, this is not including, you know, there's so many more other people in the company that are bringing on independent brokerages and things of that nature. So we're not by yep. no being saying that this is an all-inclusive list this is just the people we know right so yeah, and, it, and it's not even all the people that we've brought on we just chose this list because we asked people to fill out a quick survey of what their you know 2018 production was and these are the guys that that, that filled it out and this isn't even all of them because we couldn't fit them all on here so right. parker rapid pemberton fire. rapid yeah. fire Let's rapid go. fire parker pemberton 230 sides 78 million in volume he was used to be with caldwell banker all right Andrew cool. Franklin. Oh my God. When I saw this 873 sides, he was with Remax $310 million in sales volume in 2018. Yep. The DeRoaches, Julie and Daniel DeRoaches, 387 sides, 139 million sales volume 2018, formerly with Coldwell Banker. Crazy. The Warner group. Love the Werners. Jennifer Warner, 207 sides, 83 million in volume with Remax out of uh, the Phoenix area. Love those guys. Oh, and Tracy and Jason. Tracy Cousineau team out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia, 442 sides, $129 million in sales volume in 2018, and they were independent. This is a company that was not paying uh, any franchise fees to anybody. Darren James, our friend down in the Bayou, Louisiana. Uh, 534 sides, 73 million in sales volume. He was independent right before he came, uh, right before us, actually. Yep. Darren James came over. And our friends, Jeff and Marcy Willems, um, they actually own their own Remax franchise prior mm -hmm. to coming over. They own the whole franchise. Um, but they operated the franchise, I believe, sort of like a team. Um, and we're talking 490 sides, 105 million in volume. These guys are no joke. This is not, this isn't the light list, right? Right, here. right. Yeah. By the way, yeah, they, you know, these people must all, you know, have um, seen something, right? Like, no, they're, they're all crazy. Yeah. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. What are, you know what's, yeah. what's going on? They're, they're, you know, they're definitely selling some real estate. Right. So if anybody thought that, um, you know, everybody just comes over here, twiddles their thumbs and, and, and calls, you know, real estate agents. Um, I hope that this gets you a little more clear. Right. View. Ryan Reilly, my buddy down in Columbus, Ohio. OH. 198 sides. Great, great job, Columbus home team. 41, 41 million. He was with an independent company. Um, wasn't independent himself. He's with Cutler. Um, group 4610, our friends Fred and Kevin, 342 sides, 105 million. They're, uh, they were a big expansion team for uh, Keller Williams. They were formerly, uh, oh, I put formerly Indy in there. You know what? That's incorrect. They were just, uh, they were Keller Williams. I don't know. I, I messed the slide up. So the good. Love Ohio team, they're down in Southern Ohio. Um, Mike Wall, 218 sides, 41 million in volume, for, formerly with Keller Williams. Brent Gove, Gove. our buddy <laughs> out in uh, the Sacramento area of California, 211 sides for over 100 million in volume, formerly Keller Williams. The Vesta Group, our buddy Dan, Bunch. Dan, Dan Bunch. Six hundred and sixty-two sides for forty-six million in volume. He was independent. Vesta Real Estate Advisors was the name. And of course, Tammy Pack. What's up, Tammy? Absolute charm real estate. And she is oh. an absolute charmer. She her so if you guys don't uh follow her on social media, you need to follow her social media. She's a boss. 162 sides, 46 million in volume, formally independent. I hope I got that one right. It seems right. Like, am I wrong on that one? No, I don't know. I might have. I was uh, talking and typing at the same time. Mike, Mark Z, our buddy up north in Michigan, 505 sides, almost 100 million in volume. I think I made that up. I'm guessing on Mark Z's numbers because he didn't fill out the survey. Just oh, okay. Time. Were you I'm guessing sure on Kyle Whistle, Whistle too? Right, yeah. I'm, uh, well, I know he did 305 sides because he told me he did two more than Dan. Uh, he did two more than uh, uh, Dan Beer. 
and Dan did three oh three oh three. <laughs> They're not competitive at all. No, not at all. So our buddy Kyle Whistle was an independent broker out of San Diego, Southern California. He was one of the most successful independent brokerages down there. Actually, came over about a year ago. Uh, three hundred and five sides in two hundred and fifteen million in volume. And one of our latest uh, um, Mavericks, Dave DeVoe of Keller Williams, formerly of Keller Williams, 322 sides, 125 million in volume. He's one of the uh, strongest expansion teams that uh, KW had. Great guy. And he's just uh, growing leaps and bounds over there. And then our friend, Trisha Turner. Trisha's in Houston, right, Jay? Uh, yep, Houston. Houston, Texas. 234 sides, 64 million in volume. And she was formerly an independent broker down there. I don't remember what her name of her company was. I don't think she filled out the, the survey. I think Tammy Pack, I just want to set the record straight. Something tells me I did that wrong. I believe Tammy Pack was around 80 million. Cause I said that to you. I said, Oh my God, 80 million. Right. I, I think, think that's I right. that. I'm sorry, Tammy. Um, 80 million for, uh, for Tammy down there. Right. So it kind of was some of the things that we want to cover. Um, here is, you know, the, you know, well, we talked a little bit about why already and the compensation model and misconceptions. Um, and then all the, we're going to get into all the ways, you know, to structure it. So here's, here's some things that, that, you know, you know, I think it's just worth mentioning. There's, there's probably some more that you could talk to as well, but, you know, you know, thinking that you have to give up your brand, you know, the way I like to explain everybody, you know, when you, when you, you know, there's, you know, the, this, it's hard to make a decision to move your independent. There's a lot of pride and a lot of times it's ego that gets in the way of trying to think, okay, well, I built this brand, I built this company, man, I'm not moving, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to give that up. And, um, you know, I've heard that a few times of people having a little bit of a sentimental attachment, um, you know, as far as all that, you know, as far as all that stuff goes. So, you know, at any rate, um, it's, it's, it's not necessarily the case, right? So, you know, depending on what the state allows you, you know, you're able to have your own um, brand. So, you know, think, think of it as like being powered by Intel, right? So you could have a Dell or Microsoft, but it's powered by Intel. That's kind of how I look at it. EXP, you're brokered by EXP. Um, in many cases, you know, we've had, you know, some of these larger, you know, teams and independents come over and slap a, you know, an EXP sticker over their Keller Williams or whatever the case may be. And they're compliant, you know, so that's, you know, as, as simple as that. So, so that's one thing I think, you know, you don't have to give up your brand. You know, this is, you know, think of this um, as a, an extension of your brand or a platform that uh, your brand could be, you could, you know, to help you execute your goals and your vision for your company. And then, um, you know, getting rid of the physical, physical space. There's talk, a lot of times there's confusion around, um, oh, can you have space? You know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a cloud-based model, you know, that's a choice, right? So many of the teams, if you operate, you have, a, you know, a high performance team, that's a mega agent team, and you have, you know, a ton of agents and a ton of, staff and you have space uh, you're going to probably keep that space i think that's what we found to be the case for most people and e even potentially leveraging that space to you know to help with the agent attraction efforts and having a place for people to come to um that that may be you know that you're working with in your marketplace there so um you know there's always you know the opportunity if you have a if you're a large independent you're traditional independent you're not in production and you're wanting to get rid of the expense of the physical space then that's also an opportunity for you as well um, you don't have to keep the space, obviously, but it, so it could be a savings or you could keep it. It's up to you. Uh, and as long as, again, you know, as long as it you know, matches up with the state, you know, the state law in terms of, you know, you might have to have a broker in the office if that's what the state law, you know, it's, as long as you're compliant, um, EXP is going to be supportive for the most part. I've not seen any, any challenges in any of the states that 35 plus states that we're in. So, um, you know, my agents won't see the value. Here's another one. So um, it's interesting that, you know, you know, that this is the case, Al, because, you know, the real reason I think most of us moved to EXP is because we knew it was best for the agent, right? Like, you know, if it wasn't good for the agent, then what are we buying into? Um, you know, the, they're not going to stay. The revenue share, you know, is, is a, is a short-term thing if, if, if the agents don't see the value. So, you know, um, you know, there's this, you know, a lot of times as you're looking at it thinking, well, my agents aren't going to want to pay into this, you know, to this, and they're not going to be excited. Hey, they're getting ownership that they weren't getting before. They have the opportunity to earn a re little bit of revenue share goes a long way, you know, for an agent that's maybe, you know, doing, you know, 10, 15, 20 deals a, um, a year, you know, if you can make an extra 500 bucks a month or whatever in revenue share, that's, that, that, that's a big deal. Um, you know, that's, 
um, you know, that could be life changing for some people. And so it's not real hard to do that. If, if you have a few friends or you talk to a few people and, you know, you're, you now have a financial incentive to help them do that. And, um, you know, helping them get some passive income, it feels pretty good when you can change somebody's life like that. So, you know, it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool business model. Your agents are going to love it. They're, you know, for the most part, I think they're going to follow you wherever you go, because if you're the rainmaker and you're providing the value, um, you know, for you that for you guys that have teams for sure, you know, they're, they're going to come on board with you no matter what. Uh, anything you want to add to that, um, Al, as far as? Yeah, I mean, you know, when we came over, it's, it's hard to believe it was already 18 months ago. Um, and it's been, uh, and when I say that, I, I, I immediately smile because we've been having so much fun. But I do remember, I remember the day that we were going through this and that I dropped the licenses off and, and everything and, and the, the work and preparation that went into that. Um, for me, uh, I was an independent broker. My biggest thing that took the most amount of time for me was signs, getting the sign design done, get it to the, the, the sign maker and get all the signs uh, reprinted and back and swapped out. Um, that took the most amount of time, which didn't take a whole lot of time. We had the whole thing done in, um, you know, from start to the time we made the decision to over in two weeks. Um, and of course I did not do that by myself. I had an amazing team behind me, but um we did not give up our brand. Um, we've um, we had to tweak it a little just because of, of the laws in Ohio that state you can't have the words real estate in your team name. So we were Stasic Real Estate. Uh, we changed it to Stasic Group. And now we're Chase Stasic Group because we've added another team and, um, and combined the brands. And we went from 10 agents to just over 40 agents in 18 months. Um, and it's been fun. It hasn't been a grind. That's that's a that's a an asterisk I want everyone to understand is that um, I've never been a recruiter um, to prove that when I left Remax with about eight agents uh, over the course of three, four years, I only got up to a total of 12. So that doesn't make me recruiter of the year by any means, right, right. you know, um, I kept my physical space swapped, uh, you know, my logos out and, um, um, and um, kept my office space. In fact, you know, I ended up moving to a different office space that was just closer to some other real estate companies. Um, all of my agents, all 10 agents that were with me at the time, all 10 agents saw the value. I showed them the EXP explained video that probably a lot of people, uh, I, I would have to say most people I'd like to think probably have seen. If you haven't seen it, you should, whoever sent it to you, you should watch it or reach out to us and we'll be happy to send you it. Um, but they saw the value because it's about the agent. This is the most agent centric company that I've ever seen or been a part of, frankly. And um, that doesn't mean any of the other companies aren't great. They're all great companies. Otherwise they wouldn't be on the, the planet, but this is the best I've seen. And I've, I'm a, you know, you and I, Jay, the one thing that you could we're guilty of is we're, we're, we're business model junkies. I like mm. to say, and we've studied them inside, outside. We've studied other people's, you know, when, when you coach thousands of real estate agents, all around the country and in Canada, you get to see P&Ls, you get to see models, and we've seen them. So my agents knew, and I knew, as soon as, as, soon as I saw the, 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 the value proposition with the stock and the ability to help us grow and that there would be an, a financial alignment and them helping us grow our team, uh, uh oh, just lost our slides. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm not for some real talk. We're gonna have to talk real, uh, that's, real, real that's, that, folks. That's, a, that's okay, um, but they saw the value. And I knew that as an independent broker, that if they saw the EXP model versus what I was offering, it was going to be hard for me to compete. Now, I, I layered all of our value on top of it. So we didn't lose any of that value, but um, it was going to be hard for me to compete. Now, let me see if I can remember that last bullet point. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to lose money if right, I yeah. move over. So, you know, let's talk about that. Because if, if you're a large team, and you're with Remax, or you're with Keller Williams, or you're with Caldwell Banker, you're with Century, any of these brands, you're going to be paying fees to not only the broker, um, and if you are the broker, you're going to be paying them to corporate through franchise fees. There's no way around it. That's how they make money, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're an independent like myself, uh, and you're not paying any, anybody any, anything, the question that's immediately in your mind is, how can I'm going to lose money, Right. So, I mean, that's the, that's the, that's, I think the number one um, roadblock, I think, uh, and it's a mental roadblock that people have to kind of get around it. They think in the first year that they join EXP, they're going to lose money. And as I speak and, and tell you that we've just completed our first, well, you know, our one year was um, last September was our actual official first 
one year. And even if we went for my first 12 calendar months, uh, we not only did not lose any money, we were more profitable. Now, after our first full calendar year, which was 2018, um, we were massively more profitable. Um, and that's not just because of the revenue share. That's also including the stock that I either was awarded or purchased throughout the, the process of us selling homes because I participated in the stock purchase program. And the math is the math. So I'm happy to share that math with anybody on a private one-on-one uh, -on -one call. If anybody wants to yeah. schedule a call with me, I'm happy to do that. But, um, you know, I can tell you that and show you actually that um, not only did I not lose money, but I was more profitable. Than I right. I, I would, I would, um, I would go out on a limb here to say that um, every single person that's on that list mo that moved over to EXP um, did not lose money um, in terms of their, in terms of their, um, in terms of their model. Um, and over the course of the year, you know, making that transition. Now, in some, in some cases, if you're moving from being independent and moving over the, the only real, and I mean, let's, let's just get right down to the brass tacks. So let me, let me do this. Let me show y'all, let me show you the, the fee structure and, and why it should cost you nothing. You literally should be making more, even if you're independent, um, when you move to EXP and I got to find my slides again. And what happened to those slides, my friend? I don't know. I just hit a button and they disappeared. I mean, they literally disappeared. I don't know where they went. <laughs> well, this just proves to you, everybody watching, that we are live. Yep. As our friend Adam Bailey used to say, live and direct. I don't know what the heck happened. But yeah, all right, so here we go. So I'm going to go back over to the share button. And... Actually, I found it again. There you go. All right. So I, I got to bring that window to front. What's up, Chris? Went Mark Henderson, Dave Burrow, G2G. I'm not <laughs> sure what that means. All right. So, there we so go. This, is the, this is the actual uh, structure for uh, the EXP Mega Agent team requirements. So, uh, 40 million in aggregate volume of real estate transactions in the last 12 months, 175 transactions. You have to have 10 capping agents minimum plus a team leader in the, in the last 12 months. Um, agents um, will qualify for a quarter cap. So this is the big, this is the big uh, thing about, you know, being a, you know, if you get approved for this, which we would have to submit and get you approved uh, for, for this program. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's a $4,000 cap. So it means all of your agents that come over are coming over on a $4,000 cap instead of a $16,000 full cap or the traditional team, which is 8,000 cap. So if you're under 10 agents, if you don't meet these requirements, your team cap would be 8,000. So 4,000 is just not a lot of money, right? So it makes it real easy for, for these conversations with your agents, regardless, again, if you're a team or you're independent, uh, 4,000 is a lot easier to swallow. The, there are a couple of things that are um, required. Number one, this is a guaranteed floor cap of 56,000. So, you know, you're guaranteeing 56,000 to EXP, which is your 16,000 plus 10 agents times 4,000, that's 56,000. If you have 12 or 15 agents, you're probably fine. If you only have 10 agents and somebody doesn't, you know, um, hit the $4,000 cap, which again, production wise, you're talking about uh, 20,000 in volume, 20,000 in, or I'm sorry, 20,000 in gross commissions, because 16,000, um, is, is uh, 20 percent of 80,000. So, a full capper pays in 80,000. If they do 80,000 gross commissions, they will have capped. Um, if you have agents on a team, that means that you know 8,000 would be their cap, and they would have had to do 40,000 to hit that cap. And in this scenario, 4,000, uh, which is 20,000 dollars in gross commissions. Um, if you have agents that don't hit that, you'd have to pay the difference. By the way, just to um, interject, yep. um, they're on a split with you. So if your agent brings in 20,000 to their side after the split, um, that's what, that's what would get them the cap. So if they did $40,000 in GCI and you were on a 50, 50 with them, right. 20, 20,000 would go to their side. 20,000 would go to your side and um, their, their cap would then, they would then cap um, if they were to bring that in. So just wanted to clarify it. Right, also great. wanted to clarify too, that the guaranteed aggregate of 56,000 is the minimum if you're going to qualify for this program, not the maximum. Um, I, I was talking with a, with a gentleman um, that, that has a, a, a very large team. Um, and, and it was just, you know, people sometimes just mis, mis, mishear things 
and and then they they take that for fact. That actually happened to me when I was checking this thing out because of you know you there's so much information coming at you. I want you to be clear. It's the guaranteed aggregate of a minimum of sixty five thousand. That's what you're guaranteeing, which is what Jay just explained. But it's that's not the that doesn't that's not the cap. Um, if you yeah, added another right. ten, yeah. yeah. Ten more agents got to pay. You know they're all going to come over on a four thousand dollar cap as well. That's so, it. Um, so yeah. So the the and the the key to this is that you know you have to have a split, a minimum of twenty five percent that you're retaining as the team leader um, uh, with with these agents throughout the year. So where this conversation gets sticky and long is when you have a let's say you have a structure, an independent structure that's you know where you have a cap with your agents and your cap is 19,000. I had, a, had two conversations in the last two days, very similar situation. If your agents are capped at 19,000 and you're looking at how to move them over to EXP, you got a problem because $16,000 for what EXP brings to the table plus $19,000 for what you bring to the table is going to be a difficult conversation with that agent. So in those cases, if they're high producing agents, you would, you would probably have to structure something different with them. Um, and that, and, and when I say that, you know, if you've got two top producing agents that you're typically making, you know, $19,000 on, that's probably a couple of your better agents, um, that wouldn't move over to EXP and pay you 19,000. You know, that's the, that's the downside. You know, that's literally the only model that I've ran into where it becomes a, a little bit of a, a threat to move to EXP based on your current model. You got to determine how sustainable your model is moving forward. Um, in, in the, you know, in the upcoming years, if you're making, you know, if you're making any money with that model uh, or not, I mean, you got to do the math, but you know, at the end of the day, those are the ones that become a threat. Any of them that, that aren't, aren't producing at the maximum, you know, you have some, you can structure some things here because you're only going to have 4,000 that goes to the cap to EXP. And, you know, if you were charging 19, then you still are retaining $15,000 of that cap. So you could structure that a couple of different ways that you could do it. We would probably want to have a conversation, but when you look at the bulk of your roster and you got 15 or 20 or 30 agents that maybe qualify that don't, that, that aren't, you know, full capping agents. And what I look at is I suggest, you know, if you got an agent, cause this, it, it's, it's real hard for someone on your team. If you, if they're on a split, if even 75, 25 or 50, 50, it's going to be really hard for them to, to, to cap and hit the icon status, which we'll talk about icon status here in a second in a little more detail, just so you're real clear on what it is. But the, you know, the, the ability to earn that 16,000 back in stock is, is very appealing. And some of your best agents may or may not be likely to hit that. But you know, what, what you have to understand is that they, if they're not, um, you know, if they, you know, they basically have to hit 16,000. So they're doing 80,000 in gross commissions on their side after their uh, split after yeah so after their split so they had to do um you know in order to hit that sixteen thousand. so you know you got to do the math on that but essentially whatever your split is times your average sale price do the average and and break that down so how many deals are they going to have to sell in order to to hit the cap and it's going to be quite a few you know and then 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 you know the additional deals that they have to do is um there's a 250 dollar transaction fee that um, is paid uh, to the company uh, until you reach five thousand um, dollars, and that's only going to be paid half, right? So you know, if you're if if let's say for instance um, you're capped, and there's an example here in a second that'll show this, but you know, you, if you're capped and you've got an agent that hasn't or your agent has capped and they're paying towards that because only half the commission is there, they're only paying half of the the two fifty. It's only one hundred and twenty five dollars. So it's going to take a lot more deals for them to get to five thousand dollars and become icon. And it's going to take twice as many deals. So when you when you really look at what it would take for them to be on your team, um, uh, at, even if they're a full cap, um, if they're a full capping agent and be on your team and 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 hit icon status, it's it's very rare. I would say it's I mean it's going to be very rare for for anybody to hit that. So so you know that but, being the case, but you if know, you had somebody that was doing that, you know we we have a solution. <laughs> You know, there, there, there are certain circumstances where it, it makes sense to structure it differently. And so that would be where we'd have to have right. a conversation with you about those agents that right. are absolutely, you know, killing it on your team. We have um, a way to structure that a little differently. Right. So, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a couple ways that you can structure it. At the end of the day, what we're talking about here is, you know, it's a $4,000 quarter cap and a, they're wanting to pay the 16 because they think they're going to get the 16 back in stock. It's a risk. It's a gamble. If they don't hit it, then they paid 16,000 EXP unnecessarily. So the point we're trying to make here is that, you know, that, you know, your, your agents may, may think they want to do that. 
if you want to, if they want to do that, tell them to go buy the stock. You know, that's, you know, stay on your 4,000 cap um, is what I would recommend. And, um, and you can go buy the stock with your own money. You know what I mean? So, so that's, you know, that, then there's no risk of them hitting it or not hitting it. So hopefully that was somewhat clear anyway. Um, so, you know, looking at some of the cost savings, a lot of, you know, a lot of people, you know, are not, not doing the math on, and some of you will save them, some of this stuff and some of you won't. So, you know, but what I've seen, you know, what we've seen kind of on average, if, if you're providing, especially as an independent, if you're providing technology that you can get rid of the cost, um, you know, with whether it's, you know, sky slope or dot loop for your agents, or it's, um, you know, whatever your back end management, you know, uh, is for your brokerage, you know, all that kind of stuff. You're typically, you know, there's typically a, you know, as much as 14, 15 grand, you could be saving there um, because, because, you know, they're going to be providing each agent with all the technology um, that's included in that $50 a month. Uh, the workers compensation and, you know, uh, depending on what, you know, what, you know, what, what size you are and how many deals you are, this is going to vary and what kind of, you know, what kind of program you have, you're on or whatever. But if you're independent and you own your own brokerage, these are, you know, some costs that you're going to save. Um, in office broker in charge and cost to manage, you know, it's kind of hard to factor, but you know, it's about a half of an employee's worth of time. And, um, you know, the amount of free, you know, freedom that it gives you um, in terms of not having to mess with, you know, the broker in charge type things. Um, if you have a hire in that place, then you're going to save that person's salary. You're not going to need that person. Um, and so there's probably going to be some savings there. And then training and support, you know, roughly about 9,000 a year. I mean, that's 53.5. If you're, you know, if you save all of that, um, you know, every situation is going to be different. So I'm not trying to say everybody's going to save 50 grand, but, you know, and, you know, I think what, you know, a lot of brokerages and independents and teams do when you're looking at coming over is you're, you're, you're looking to change your business model because it's not working, you know, or it's not, you know, you, you see this as a better way to do it. So you might look, be looking at other costs and other things that are, that you could save. And I'm not even talking about the real estate here, you know, that you, you may be able to save and, and stuff like that as well. So those are just some of the things that, you know, people tend to sometimes forget that they're going to save money too. So that's what well, Jay, the, yeah. the, the thing with the training and support, I appreciate you put a lower can be in conservative number of $9,000, but the people that we're talking to that you said at the beginning of this, this broadcast that the, that we want to hear this message. These are top people. These are people who are spending 15, 20, 25,000, even $30,000 a year on masterminds. We know right. this because they were, they, they were, were the people, they were, yeah. And, 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 you know, we, we were able to, to, you know, drastically reduce almost to nothing, the cost of our mastermind. So that, that $9,000 is a conservative number at, at, at the, at best. Right. Um, I, I personally think that um, most that are listening to this, that are uh, absorbing what, you know, they're hearing the message because we're speaking directly to them. Those brokers, those independent brokers and the big team leaders are probably spending in excess of twenty to twenty five thousand right. dollars on coaching. We know that for a fact. Right. True. So that's that's yeah. So I tried to be conservative there. Again, you know, everybody's numbers are different, but it's just something to think about if you're looking at the model. So yeah, so uh commission and cap, I mean, this is just to make sure you're clear on, you know, um what everything is. I mean, you're start you're you're basically it's an 80-20 split until you hit sixteen thousand if you're a full capping agent or if you're the team leader or um, you know, the broker that's moving over and it's going to be bringing your company over. Um, you know, after that, it's hundred percent commission for the remainder of the anniversary year, that 250 caps transaction fee. Uh, you know, if you come over as a mega agent team, you don't have to pay that 250. Um, it, it's a, it's just a $75 transaction fee. So you don't have to, uh, to hit icon status. You just, you just have to pay your bill, uh, pay, pay, you know, you have to hit that 56 K. So when you're paying that 56,000, uh, when it's guaranteed, that's when you're going to be, um, uh, become icon is once you hit, you know, hit the trigger for paying in the, the floor cap of 56 K. So, so that, you know, this 250 cap transaction fee only comes into play for someone who's um, not a mega icon team. Um, and, and that's their situation. So you're essentially going to have a transaction fee. Once you, once you cap um, of $75 per transaction for, you know, for every transaction after that, that's, that's basically it. And then. Yep. Can I add one thing there? Yep. Um, Today's date is what, Jay? I don't even know. It's February 23rd, 26th. Somewhere, somewhere in the realm of 23rd and 26th. End of February. As of the end of February, the, the standard cost that you guys are seeing there, the $50 a month tech fee and the 35-month EXP university fee is uh, accurate. But um, from what I've, we've been told from leadership is that that $35 a month um, is, is uh, what they're toying with is, is taking that away. So it's only going to be $50 a month. And going back to the four hundred and twenty dollar fee that they would just take out of your first transaction, some agents are 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 just you know everyone's different. 
with their finances and how they like to run their business. Um, some people uh, prefer to have it just $50 a month uh, and take the $420 out of their first transaction, which is the way it was when we first joined, but they switched it to this. Word has it that um, leadership's gonna be switching it back to that, or at least giving an option of that so that uh, it's not that. I just wanted to throw that in there. Right, cool. And uh, so, all right, so the next slide here, um, just wanna break down, just, just so you can see, this is how they calculate commissions. And that would be example one. What happened to example one? There it is, all right. So, um, so this is an example of a 50-50 split between a team leader and team member. Neither the team leader or member are capped. So you're not capped in this scenario. Uh, transactions got a 10,000 gross commission. This is how it breaks down. You're on a 50-50 split, 5,000 to each side. They're going to take 20% of your, um, of your 5,000, which is a thousand bucks. And they're going to do that until you hit 16,000 and you're capped. And on the agent side, they're going to do that four times until they're capped. So basically four transactions, if that was, if your average commission is 10 grand and your, and your agents are going to be capped and not have to pay anything to EXP. Um, which is why I'm saying this is the easy, an easy sell for your agents. It's not going to hold anybody up. They're going to be all about it. Um, so less, um, you know, 50% of the broker review fee. So uh, basically uh, $12 and 50 cents. So that $25 broker review fee um, for each uh, team member, it splits 50, 50 risk management fee split 50, 50. Um, so it leaves you at uh, both with $397 and, and, and 67, $3,967 50 cents. Makes sense. Go. Rewind Man, it. I love, I love that breakdown. I'm a visual person and I didn't even know that they had this. Did you find this? No, I made it. Oh, you made this. Hell no, I didn't make this. <laughs> <laughs> Cause this is what I do no. is I always, I always look at it in, in terms of buckets. So when I have someone at the office, an agent that's wanting to join us, I, I explain it exactly like this, but I, I used, I draw, I'm a terrible artist, but I put buckets in there. This is like having two buckets. Right. Go ahead. Right. This is great. So yeah, so this one, this example, and again, um, it's actually probably not the right example to be shown based on who we're talking to here. If you're a mega agent icon, um, you know, potential, then this is not going to actually apply to you, it, it, but it's useful for you to see the scenario just because um, it, it'll make sense here when I explain it. So this is, a, this is for a team leader that's capped and a team member that's not capped. So you could definitely have the situation with a, a team member that's not capped, uh, but the team leaders break down 5,000 commission, same situation. So what? So they're using less a transaction fee of $250, okay? So this is um, um, minus 125 because it's a 50-50 split. They're not charging the two, whole 250 in this scenario. They're only charging half of that because you're only, you're only half of the commission. They're not charging the other half to the team member. This was a question I had for a long time and I didn't know the answer to. Uh, so they're not going to charge, you know, when you're not capped, but you're in that, if, if, you, were a, if you were not quite um, at the mega icon, uh, level and you were just capping trying to get to icon not guaranteeing the 56k floor or mega team program this is what it would look like so um you know there's 125 dollars on that transaction which means again you know when you think about well what's it going to take for you to hit icon status um it's going to be you know 125 you know dollars into 5,000. you know if you had all agents if you're not in production you know it's going to take 125 dollars into it's going to take what is that 25 transactions so 20, you know, it would take 25 additional transactions that your team members would have to close for you to hit icon status, just so you know the math of how they get there. Um, but that's, you know, that's basically everything else is the same. You know, they split it 50, 50, 50, 50. And, and then, you know, obviously. Um, that's a great breakdown. Right. So anyway, all right. So next one. All right. So. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't think we need to talk through this. I think, you know, everybody kind of knows the equity awards and stuff and how you do that. So if you don't, you know, you should watch some more videos. Um, Icon awards. Um, you know, this is, you know, this is this, you know, to, to, I wanted to explain it where, you know, I wanted to take something from EXP and explain it and not just make some, some slide up. So, you know, this is uh, essentially what it is, is, you know, you know, the 16,000, you have the ability to, you know, you get that back in the form of stock. So, um, you know, the production requirement is 16,000. Um, and then if you're, you know, if you're paying that 56 K guarantee, then, you know, you're, you're not having to pay that additional $5,000 in, in, um, in transaction fees. So if, if you're not, then you have to pay $250 per transaction until you hit 5,000 and then, uh, and then you become icon. So the production, that's the production requirement. It has to be 500,000 or more admit with a minimum of 10 closed transactions. 
um, and, and, um, and payment of an icon, icon qualifying fee equal to 5,000 less capped transaction fees during a pay during the same anniversary year. So that's essentially 21,000. Um, that's, you know, that's what you're paying into EXP and then they're giving you 16,000 back. The way they give it back, 12,000 of that is in the uh, EXP World Holdings common stock that is awarded, invests after three years. And then they give you an additional 2,000 um, that would be issued after each company event during that anniversary year. So if you go to the EXP con and the shareholder summit, you can, um, um, there's no vesting period. You, you would get $2,000 for each one of those, which is the total of 16,000. So that being said, um, that's pretty much it. That's all I had as far as slides. So we can turn, I don't know why I don't like using slides right now, but I'd rather not be using slides. So anyways, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. What 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 things have we not talked about, or what um, what questions are you getting that's coming up that where people are having challenges or questions about uh, um, as as far as uh, you know they're moving their brokerage. Oh, I think you I think you did a great job of it for anybody who's watching this that um, you know is either an independent brokerage that should get you clear um, clear enough at least to you know what the next step would be would just be to reach out and get in our calendar and, uh, and, and get, you know, get clear on um, any other questions that you might have. But I mean, as far as the basis, you did a great job in covering it, by the way, Towers Josu said today is February 27th. So thank you, oh, thank Towers. You, I appreciate that clarity. We didn't know what day it was. Uh, Terry, just uh, Terry Thomas just reached icon. Congratulations. Terry. Oh, yeah. When I, um, our first year, it took, it took me just kind of give you guys some context. Um, we, we had joined mid August and by February of the following year, 2018, August of 2017 to February, we, um, I had hit the icon agent award with, of course, the help of my team. I had closed about 14 transactions myself that were all listings. And, um, and then the team team did about 75 transactions in that, that time period. Um, and, and I was able to hit icon. Some of the people that are watching this, you're going to hit, you'll, you'll hit it way faster than, than, than I did. You're with such any of these brands, you're going to be paying fees oh. to not only the broker. Um, I think, and if you are the broker, what was that? This, you're Dude, gonna, you're talking hey, way faster you're than, talking. Than, than I did. <laughs> any of these brands. You're Hold on a second. You gotta, you gotta turn it down. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what just happened there. All right. <laughs> I didn't know for sure which one was the real you talking. <laughs> this is the real Slim Shady. Real Slim Shady. From Cleveland. All right. But I think that's it. I think that, that again, our goal here today was just to, uh, one, um, clear up any misconceptions and get people clear. Um, a lot of people um, are, are, um, are probably just have the wrong thoughts about what they need, would need to do or what it would look like to change over. Um, right. I brought an independent brokerage uh, that I had over. We were doing about $1.6 million a year in commissions with about 12 agents. Um, and I was, um, I was made whole, meaning from what I paid into the company, from what I got back with, with stock and revenue share um, in, in about five months. Now, I'm not saying that it would take you five months to do that, but that's, that's, that was my experience. And um, that was only five months into it. And we weren't making a whole lot of revenue share at that point. So um, I believe that um, with the right strategy um, and then in full disclosure, because of some of the costs that you were saying that I was able to cut, my, my overhead went down dramatically. And that was without, you know, I'm not saying that I lost my office. We kept our office. So in fact, we moved into a slightly bigger office because I knew that if we build it, they would come. And I was right. We're at 42 agents from, from 10 that came over with me. So if anybody's watching this, and uh, you have an independent brokerage, you know, small or medium, um, just hop in my calendar, reach out, send me a Facebook message. I'm happy to share with you the numbers so that you can actually see what um, I experienced and why 2018 was, you know, after bringing my independent brokerage over the most profitable year that I've had in 20 years of selling real estate. And I'm talking most profitable. Um, it wasn't the most amount of homes I sold. That was in 2016. So full disclosure, 2018, you know, um, you know, we, we actually, I take that back. Um, I believe we probably sold just as many to be fair that we, you know, we sold just about as many in 2018 as we did to 2016, our best year. 
um, but we were massively more profitable. And I can show you those numbers and I'm happy to. Right on. So, um, so I just, uh, full disclosure, as you say, um, I just uh, clicked on a button here that I don't know what's going to happen. So we'll see. Um, but es essentially, I wanted to watch the live stream on Facebook and it said I could do that. So I clicked the button, but I can't see. It. So it's not, that's not working. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing I would say, just give, you know, given another scenario on, um, you know, scenario looking at, you know, okay, well, here, here's my structure. I've got these agents and they're on all these varied splits and this and that and the other. Um, you know, what's the, you know, you know, the, the, the main, the main thing that you always got to look at is, you know, there's a, there's a subset of your agents that, um, that are, that are not producing at a really, really high level. And, um, and those are the ones that are, you know, they're all going to, those are all going to be a lot easier to fit in, into, you know, the 4,000, you know, $4,000 quarter cap thing. So, you know, when you're looking at all your agents, you know, you got to look for like, you know, you got to be looking for what's that, what's the sweet spot in here of agents that if I, if I had to change my whole entire structure um, to 75, 25, in order for them to get this $4,000 cap, who's going to lose money here and, and who's going to gain money. And, and you do that for the company side and you do that for the agent dollar side and you look at, okay, well, you know, everybody here is winning. And then I got a few here that I've got to figure out. And uh, you know, if you, if you break it down that way, it's a little bit less, um, you know, a little bit less uh, hard to figure out. Um, but you're going to have a couple of people that at the top, you know, and usually in most companies and most models that, that are, you know, that don't fit like a, it's a, it's a, a square peg and, you know, and, and it's either, you know, you got to figure, you know, you got to determine if it's worth it for you or not. I can tell you, you know, if you get on a call with us and we go through the numbers and we show you what, you know, where our focus is and if you're out of production or trying to get out of production and that's your goal and you're trying to end the endless treadmill of recruiting, you know, you know, being an adult daycare, um, you know, there's a better way. I mean, that's, you know, that's why we moved to EXP. It's a better, it's a better place for our agents. They're delivering on the value to our agents. Um, and, you know, obviously if you want to continue to build it, you know, build a team where you're providing, um, you know, certain value and getting some of that commission, there's a lot of ways to structure that moving forward. I think there's a lot more alignment for you and your team, you know, for to bring people on at a certain split and then move them up to a certain point, And then they become their own independent full capping agent at a certain point. Uh, more alignment for that. Um, who was it? Somebody was telling me, oh, it was Kevin uh, Shoemaker told me yesterday, his number one agent, his top agent it, for nine years has been with him. He left, but guess where he went? He stayed right there at EXP. And so now, now Kevin's helping him build a team. Kevin's going to help that guy go be successful. Um, whereas, you know, typically there wouldn't have been any reason for Kevin to be excited about that at any, you know, at any capacity. I so, don't, I, that, is, that might be in the top three reasons. What you just said, is in the top three reasons of one of the reasons that I, that I, that I joined this amazing company. Right. Um, because I didn't have anywhere else for them to go. You know what right. I mean? Like my, my structure wasn't, and it's not to say that if you're an independent brokerage, you can't make that extra level. Um, I'm just saying I didn't have it in mind. And I know many independents have one model. They're not running two multiple models, you know, right. uh, where you're like, you can do this or you can do that. It's, you know, right. to have consistency, you usually just do one thing. Um, what this has allowed us to do is do this, still stay consistent, but Kevin's now going to help that guy be successful, which is what we would want for anybody. Right. And someone asked me, you know, is it bulletproof? You know, so you're trying to tell me you have no attrition? No, there's no such thing as anything that's bulletproof for no attrition. Of course, we still have some attrition, but here's the best part. The people that you don't want to lose, the people that the agents you've poured your heart, your soul, your money into through coaching and, and training and helping build their business up, and you truly have a great relationship with them. Those are the ones you don't want to lose. And the reason why that guy didn't go and jump ship to another brokerage is because he knew that EXP was the best. Now he may have outgrown the team model that Kevin had to offer, which is fine. But Hey, listen, I was just telling literally just telling this to another agent yesterday or day before. Um, and I said, and I'll pretend like you're the agent. I said, Jay, let's, let's pretend for a second that you just got your license and you're still the same person, but we're, we're turning the time backwards and you just got your license and you joined Stasic group. Right. And, and you're Jay Kinder. You're, you're, you know, you're a go getter. You're an a personality. You're going to go right. out and kill it, but you were smart. You jumped on a team to see the good, the bad, the what, what, what's Al doing right. What's Al doing right. wrong. Well, how would I do it differently? And you helped build the base of your business with my group, Chase Stasic group. But what's going to happen I ain't going to be keeping Jay Kinder for long because right. he's, he's going to outgrow. He's, he's just going to go because he's a leader, right? 
well, what if I had another place? What if I could partner with them a different way? Right. And that's what this model offered. And it was, it, again, I'm not saying it was the number one reason. I don't know if I have a number one reason. It serves, this, this serves my age better model. than I could. It was the business model, but that's part of the business model. Right. That's what I just, you know, so right. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. By the way, Kevin's on this. Uh, I saw him on. What's up, Pat Hayes? What's up, Kevin? Yeah, What's up? Kevin Shoemaker's on here too. Nice. Tammy, Tammy Jordan. Sorry, I got your numbers wrong, sweetie. So yeah, so you know that you know there's a, um, and definitely not to downplay, um, you know, not to downplay, uh, you know, loss of a team member sucks no matter what, right? But um, you know, uh, but but again, at least you're in a business model where it's it's supported and it's you know it's part of the model. It's not going to change, you know, no matter what. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, it's just a pretty cool thing, right? So if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you know, you should ask more more questions. Just get on a call with us. Uh, we're happy to help you dig in and try to figure it out. Um, you know, if you ask the right questions, I think you'll find the answer. Um, and we're, we're, we're here to help you. Um, we'd love to be in business with you and hopefully this was valuable and, and added some context to some of the ways you can structure a team and some of the, um, you know, the math that you need to know in order to, to, to go, you know, for most people, if it's confusing and you've got, you've got a mixed bag kind of splits and you got to you know, like, shoot, I don't even know how I'm going to do this. Like for independence that I, those are the ones that are the trickiest. Like right now you got to do the balls in your court. Now you got to do the math. Um, happy to help you with that. Jump on a call. We'll help you um, get clear on how to do it. And then for the, for the love of God, please do not go announce this to your team until you talk to us. <laughs> it's like, like, don't go doing anything. Be careful who you talk to about it. Keep the door closed um, until you're clear. Um, you know, don't, you know, don't let the cat out of the bag. So that would be uh, our advice to you. And uh, well, like we always say here at EXP, we'll need to see you at the top. Or from the top. All right. Make it a great day.